they uh, remember this very clearly, they described um, that children would be careful of children in groups, two or three. Um, they would carry, uh, I hope I get the word right, bungee sticks, not bungee cords. It was with a P, punji sticks. And these were sticks, uh, sharp sticks, that were whittled with a knife that had um, excrement on it. So they would, you know, come up, be friendly, beg, whatever. And then as soon as you turned around, they'd stab you in the leg with that. And with the feces on the stick, not only did it cut your leg severely, but um, you'd be infected immediately. Um, so they, they just said, beware of groups of kids. Be, don't trust them. Um, um, they had curfews. Wherever we went, we had to be in by, by 10 o'clock. Um, uh, dining in restaurants was um, uh, really something I have grown to love and do over my life. Um, was really a drag because you were fearful of going into restaurants and eating because you didn't know if someone tried to poison you or, um, you know, if they were Vietnamese sympathizers. You just didn't know. So you'd have a tendency to go to American service clubs to eat out. Did um, you have any close calls? Um, I did right before I left uh, on December. Uh, I left. Um, I'm jumping, but I was from the ship. I wound up at naval support activity in Saigon for six weeks, trying to get to another place. Uh, the Navy was trying to get me to another place, and uh, right before I left, I left. Um, I left Saigon on December 27, 1967, and the Tet Offensive was January, December 31st, 1967. So I got out four days before the Tet Offensive, where they bombed Tansanud Air Force Base. And I was living, I looked this up, I was living in a uh, hotel. It was uh, called the Annapolis Hotel, but it was really a military barracks. But they had maid service by Vietnamese maids. Um, and I was staying there, and for my celebratory last dinner, I went to this club, the Montana Club, which was uh, probably a half mile, three quarters of a mile down the street from where I was being the barracks. And I went there for um, a steak and a couple of beers and to celebrate leaving in country. And I went by myself. I was by myself. Um, and I got out of there. I had a couple of beers and good steak and left there. And I'm uh, probably less than 100 yards away from the front door when I hear a boom and a grenade went off in the front of the building. Was, uh, there was a, a spark of fire and a blast. And I'm walking along the road, and there's sandbags piled along the road. Don't forget, we're right near Tonsonut Air Force Base, so these roads were traveled on by U.S. military constantly. But they had, um, the Vietnamese had what we termed them was cowboys. That was the term that was used by soldiers and service people in Saigon. And these cowboys would ride these motorcycles. And on the back of the motorcycle, one guy would have grenades or a machine gun, and he would just spray, and they'd take off and go down side streets. Whatever they could hit, they would hit. And apparently, they had thrown a grenade into the Montana Club. I got out of there. I was down the road, so I heard the blast, and I immediately jumped over the um, uh, sandbags and stayed there for a few hours until the dust cleared and then headed back to the Montana Club and, I mean, headed back to the barracks and slept underneath my bed. I was so frightened for the night. I just wanted to get out of there. Mm -hmm. 